all of sci-fi movies, everybody just loves time traveling. Like who doesn't go, who doesn't like to go back 50 years, go ahead 200 years, 1000 years, whatever. So like everybody, even I just love time travel. And I was always so, so fascinated by it. It was until this time in my junior college when I was hit with a project. Like I had to make a fully working technical project. You know, most of the engineers were here. I don't know, there are too many who have been relating to it. Like we had to make a project. So when I was going through the idea of uh, what should my project be, the first thing that hit my mind was time machine. Why not go and make a time machine? You know, I was so crazy that I almost saw every movie that had time traveling in it and that also includes Bollywood movies and I don't want to name them. Um, <laughs> this one is from Back to the Future and you know, most of you have seen this thing. So, and I always think, you know, Back to the Future should be remade or there should be a sequel to Back to the Future and they should redo what they were trying to show in 2016, you know, they should, show, they should be showing that Everybody is just staring at their phones, getting pissed off at nothing. Disney characters becoming presidents of countries and... <laughs> so, anyways. Um, back then I had to use whatever was given to me. And uh, my dad had bought me a Sony PlayStation Portable gaming device from the wife. And I thought that, you know, this could be perfect for my time machine. And don't be scared, I was not going to make the car, and I was not going to make a real time machine, I was going to make just a simulation. So I thought that, why not just take this PlayStation portable and stick it onto the viewer's head, close it from all the sides to just give an immersive feeling of floating through the time. I also thought of, you know, using a vibrating chair to give, give the feel of floating through the time. But anyways, my project, and guess what, my, my project just failed miserably. And I just don't want to talk about it now. Going ahead, it was in 2015 when I first saw the Oculus Rift Virtual Reality headset. And I knew this was exactly what I was trying to make. Oculus Rift Virtual Reality headset. Virtual reality was something that I had never ever heard of before. And it just came from within as a desire to achieve something that was otherwise impossible. And uh, it was the same time when Google came out with Google Cardboard and uh, my friend Jayesh made a prototype of this. He called me up and said, uh, Kripalu, I need a cap. I said, why? There's, there's no sun out there. I mean, it's winter. So he said, no, just give me a cap and I'm going to make something amazing. So he made this. And it all began over here. So for those who don't know what virtual and augmented reality is, I, I want to ask who, who have actually experienced virtual reality. Please raise, raise your hands. So very few people. Like, there are. Like, you know. I believe there are two kinds of people here. One who believe that VR is the future and others who haven't yet experienced virtual reality. You must. So just let me give you a brief of what VR and AR is. Virtual reality takes you to a completely different environment. You don't feel as if you're present in this environment and it changes everything around you. Augmented reality is where you're present in your real environment and there are some objects, some virtual objects that you bring into your real environment to enhance your reality. So, going ahead, you must have seen people doing this a lot, in a lot of places now. In you know, malls and uh, theaters and almost everywhere. Now, what are these people doing? What is all of this hype about? Virtual reality, I believe, has an incredible potential to change the way you interact with other technologies. It has this incredible potential to bring about a paradigm shift. Now, if you look at the statistics, almost every company that is into computer technology or entertainment technology is either into virtual reality or augmented reality. So this, this is a two-year-old slide, but there are many, many more companies that are already into this business. And, you know, there is an unbelievable future. By 2018, we expect around 180 million users to be there. And by 2022, we expect it to be a 33.4 billion US dollar market. So, what is all this about? 
And even a lot of people have now said that there is there is a completely new era that is coming up. The post 1980s, there were PCs, the PC era. Post 2007, after the launch of the iPhone, there was the smartphone era. Many people believe that after, after 2016, it's going to be the VR AR era. What is it about? And how is everything going to happen? So, if you see the history of virtual reality, it has evolved from gaming. It is an amazing experience to play games in VR. So, young guys here, uh, just think of playing Counter Strike in VR. You know, just shooting people you don't like. And this is not, not really, but virtually. But that's not it. Playing games in VR is not going to make it a 35 million dollar market or bring about a revolution. It's about the other side. It's on the other side of gaming where we have to look at to leverage its 100% potential. Now when we talk about the other side of gaming of VR and AR, many people have already started utilizing these technologies for their marketing, as marketing tools. Now take for example tourism companies, what they do is they take you to snow clad mountains, just that, you know, just like this picture shows. They take you above the forests, above the rivers and everywhere and then once you have experienced that, just can't resist yourself from actually going there, from actually buying their package. That's how they use it. And uh, I want to give a recent example where Jaguar just recently um, used virtual reality to launch their vehicle. 60 people at a time could virtually test drive their car without a single actual car being there. Isn't that a great idea for a virtual product launch? Well, still, we don't believe that such marketing too is going to hit the bullseye. It is something that is on the is yet on the other side. Now, for if we, if we see the history of personal computing, all the big giant computers were first made for scientific research for medical research, for education and all those purposes. And this allowed the technology to mature. Over the time, computers became personal computers. Now every house has a computer. And so was the story of the internet era. First it was there with all the big people and then it came towards everybody. Everybody has them now. And so we believe it is the story of virtual and augmented reality. For every technology to get into the business workflow is what is going to count. For every technology has to enter the business workflow to make it more compelling rather than just a gimmick. So we are going to cover three topics today and uh, I'll give you examples of how these things can be revolutionized by bringing VR and AR into the workflow. So let's let's look at the demo and I want to start with industry. Um, we had a client called Elmac. Now, Elmac is a pharma packaging company. What they do is they make machines which their clients use to produce blisters. Blisters carry tablets. Now, they faced a problem of uh, spare part management. Their clients could not, you know, send uh, images of what the spare parts, uh, what what the list of the spare parts they require. They just used to click pictures of the spare parts and send it to a WhatsApp and saying that, okay, we need these spare parts. We sat together and tried to resolve this problem. Let me show you how. Now, this is a device by Microsoft HoloLens. It's, it's called the Microsoft HoloLens. And uh, believe me, it feels super, it, it super feels like Iron Man. This is a mixed reality device and uh, there you go, I just want to restart it, sorry. <coughs> Unity is a game development platform which we use to develop <coughs> Amazing content. Now in front of me, you see the forming station of the 3015 LMAC machine. 
this is the machine, this is the station where the tablets or the blisters are actually formed. Now, if I want to order a spare part, I would just look at this machine in 3D as if it was present in real in front of me and say, expand. <coughs> There you go. All the spare parts are here and I want an information about a spare part. I'm going to look at the spare part and touch it. There you go. It's a vital spare part. Now, what is amazing is that I can order a spare part right from this module. Let's see how. Buy now. Can you see the screen? Okay, so what I'll do is, I'll just record a message along with it. Hey there, please send me the spare part. Let's see how it was recorded. Hey there, please send me the spare part. Okay, and I'm going to send this message. Send message. Okay, it took what I said earlier. Alright, so this was the LMAC machine and I'll just restore all those papers. Restore! Alright, now this was industry. Uh, the second one was healthcare. Let's look at how we can revolutionize healthcare with this kind of technology. Now, on my right, I have a few things. What if you have a wreckage in your bone and your doctor pulls out the bone out of your body and shows how exactly the damage has been done. Now, what you do is just show you in a way where I have a, a demo of the intercerebral damages. This is the MRI scan and it shows where the damage has been done. Just see how details are shown in, on this device. If doctors can be using these kind of technologies to collaborate and examine a patient together, a doctor can be using this kind of technology to show how the actual disease is to its patient. And the patient can then use this technology to locate where the exact problem lies. And then things like meditation therapy can work. Now, apart from doctors, how about CXOs and corporates using VR and AR? Now, let's look at computer supported collaborative work. I have a model of a building over here and what if I am an architect from Mumbai and I want a person from Milan to examine my design and look at this under construction building. So whatever is uh, shown over here will be shown over there as if the 3D model of this building was present in his environment. And he can give me his insight on this on, on this building. Now, you must be seeing that the corporates are already using virtual whiteboards. They call it the virtual whiteboards. But VR and AR can change the virtual whiteboards. It adds a completely new dimension to this kind of technology that is already going on. And your real world becomes your virtual whiteboard. So this is something that can actually revolutionize computer supported collaborative work. Thank you. Well, before concluding, I would like to say whatever you have seen today would be feeling like it's so futuristic. This guy is just boasting of technologies and he just wants to show what technology can do. But that is not true. Everything that you've seen is possible today. And obviously we we'll have to thank the hardware manufacturers for this thing. And but what we believe is what is going to come in the coming days is the content. The content is going to be the king. The technology is in its very nascent stage these days and it has to be filled with creativity and dedication. And uh, 
uh, to conclude, I just like to share an idea with you guys that every time uh, you look at the technology like virtual reality, augmented reality, IoT, AI, or just anything, just think. Think about the methods, the ways, the processes that can be implied to bring these technologies into your workflow. And believe me, that is how you're going to be part of the next big revolution. Thank you so much.